Arsenal then suffer only their second defeat of the season in the league. Who could have possibly have seen this coming? It might sound a little bit daft, but they're playing Everton away at Goodison Park. Now, Everton will lead on crowd noise, atmosphere, intimidation. That's one side that we saw last year when they were trying to get in the top four. They fell slightly short on. Don, you're the only man on the planet that thinks playing against Everton's a tough one at the moment. <laughs> Banging on about the depth of squad. Uh, Arsenal and Everton. Uh, Everton, no. Everton, apparently. Listen, are going to thrash well, the crowd. The crowd, the crowd of Everton. Listen. They'd be really supportive of late. Listen. Imagine if Everton win now against Arsenal. <laughs> Don's going to be coming <laughs> in. If Everton beat Arsenal, I'll, give you, well, I'll pay Stevie 50 bucks. Oh, careful, no, I careful. Said that. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no, oh, man. He wasn't even supposed to be on today, but here he is, invited himself on. I, I there is a massive, massive, oh, massive oh, caveat. Oh, massive oh, caveat oh, to oh, this conversation. Oh, do you not hear that? What's that? That's that, that's me off the hook. No, there, oh, there, no. Is, there is a huge, of course, caveat. Go and tell him. This was when Frank Lampard was still in charge, Don, so you don't get it. Yeah, it's no, not, it doesn't no, count. No, it doesn't no, count. Not on a technicality. It's a big technicality. <laughs> they got a proper manager in now. <laughs> That's the uplift. But I tell you what, mm -hmm. where are we starting? Everton or Arsenal? Wherever you want to. We have to start with Arsenal. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Look, we'll get to Everton for Don's sake in a minute. Yeah. But nobody said it was going to be easy. I, I suppose there's going to be some, I don't know if it's Stevie or Don or you, I suppose there might be some now who are out there thinking, great, this is it, Arsenal, it's over, they're going to fold. It's a bump in the road. Right. Their, their record at Goodison is not great. The pitch was bumpy, they did not play well. They had the new manager effect, of course, really well organised Everton, we'll get to them. And they didn't play well. Martinelli, Saka... Flashes, but not much. Martinelli taking off. Martin Odegaard, arguably his worst game for a long time, taking too many touches and Everton really pressing in the middle of the park. De Curry, Onana, Adrisa Gay really worked hard in there with with uh, the white guys. Who were they again? Iwobi and Dwight McNeil. Sean Dykes wanted width. He wanted crosses. He wanted hard work. He got it. Arsenal couldn't handle it. Eddie Nketiah, who's been brilliant. Didn't really see him. He'd one chance in the first half. So it was a it was a day where Arsenal must have been in the hotel last night, and Arteta must have been saying, "Listen, guys, you know what's coming here. Right. You know what's coming, right? That Sean Dyche, new manager. They've been running their socks off all week. Bleep test, big foot up the backside. We need a response, and Arsenal had to be ready for it, and they had their poorest game." for quite some time and didn't deserve to get anything. So, yeah, it was a bad day at the office for them. Why was it such a bad day, Steve? Why didn't they turn Bad that? timing. Bad timing. I mean, honestly, it would have been tough for any team to go to Goodison today with the circumstances, quite frankly. And teams that win the league lose games. You don't know when it's coming. Right. You just know it's coming. It's just timing. It's bad timing. Arteta, Arteta would know exactly. As Craig said, he would have said to them, look, you know what you're going to get here. And as much as the manager tells you, and you do know it, you still think, well, we're just going to play a football. But when a team just basically says, well, we're not going to let you play your football, then you get that result today. I mean, the fact that they go ahead as well, I mean, it's just, it's just a perfect storm. The fact that they go ahead means that they can still run, they can still chase. Because watching the game, I'm thinking, there's no way they can keep this up for 90 minutes. Right. But the fact that they get the goal, then the crowd's even louder. Everything points towards an upset, and that's what we got. If, if this game had been, all right, being at home, you've got somewhat of an advantage, but if this game had been at the Emirates and Dykes had just come in, I think Arsenal would have still, still wiped the floor with them. Because yeah. they zipped it around in that pitch, and we were, I was talking about it with, with Augie this morning on digital. The pitch definitely played its role because Arsenal couldn't get into the stride with their passing game. It was bobbling around, they're taking those couple of extra touches and by that time, yeah. Everton were... Because the manager was on the touchline, he was shouting, he was tucking people in, he was making sure they pushed up. Arsenal couldn't play their game today and, and that's credit Everton.
Don, I think out of everyone, you've been the least enthusiastic about Arsenal's chances of, of keeping this up. Do you agree with the boys this is a bump in the road or is it a sign of something more serious? No, I think it's just a bump in the road. This is the, the reason why I, I predicted that Everton could take points off them because I know what Goodison's like. Goodison's one of the most emotional grounds you can play at. When it's rocking and when the fans are high, they're right up there. And when it's low, they're lower than the snake's belly. So I knew that, you know, even if Frank Lampard was in charge, he probably wouldn't have got the result because he likes to try and play football. Sean Dyche has got his team set up today in a 4-5-1. These three midfield players were absolutely magnificent. Decore, who Frank Lampard been a couple of weeks ago, hasn't been training with the first team. Sean Dyche put him straight into the eleven, and he showed everyone what a good player he is. Anana was, I think, man of the match today. Idrissa Gay does what he does. He got lots of legs in closing down in the middle of the park. Listen, they weren't outstanding, but I wouldn't necessarily say Arsenal were poor neither. I just thought, as Steve he said, it was the perfect storm. It's Goodison Park. It can happen. It was Sean Dyche's first game. So Everton take great hope and take comfort in the fact that played 1-1-1 one, one, one under a new manager, they can start looking up the table a little bit, try and reel one or two teams in. But Arsenal have got to, they've got to react, they've got to bounce back, they've got to show character. The Corey played almost as like a... It was almost like a 4-4-1-1 because the wide guys... Because, look, there's no point... He, he tried to get up and support Calvert-Lewin, who isn't fully fit and played an hour or so. But then he was, you know, enough to get back in and big, strong, physical boy to get back in and help. And that allowed Dwight McNeil in particular. They switched over in the first half, McNeil and Awobi. But when McNeil was on the left side and he was able to whip balls in, I mean, you've got Calvert-Lewin in there. There's no point in playing him and not having width and putting mm. the ball in the box. And actually, DeCorey should have had himself a goal in the first half. We saw the clip uh, from Calvert-Lewin with the Anana run. There was another one from across, I think it was from Awobi, and DeCorey was six yards out or seven yards out, missed his header. So it's clear what... Uh, Sean Dyche is going to try and do. He's not... It, look, I, I think the Everton fans at the moment understand what they've got. They didn't sign anybody in the transfer window. He squads his squad. It's a clean slate. Bad apples were bad apples under Frank Lampard, but they can't be under Sean Dyche. He has to just wipe that clean and say, listen, this, this, we go again here, but we need to play to your strengths. We don't, we're, not, we're not going to play out like City mm. and Arsenal. And, but we've got to be tight in midfield, we've got to be tidy on the ball, and we've got to use the width in these physical players we've got up front. And if you'd have said to me two weeks ago when Lampard was still in charge, unfortunately for him, I would have said they've gone. They're yeah. going to go down. But purely because this guy, whether you're a Sean Dyche fan or not, knows to how to manage his players. And I think Everton will be fine. How's Lampard feeling sat home watching this, all these players <clears throat> suddenly giving 100%, suddenly committed to the cause, giving 90 minutes? I, I think Frank's been around long enough that he understands how the game works. And the easy thing is to say that and think, why didn't... Where was this running last week? Yeah. But it's, it's all psychological. And I always tell you that half the game is played between your ears. And today's a great example. You know... I am, I am absolutely certain that Frank Lampard asked his players in all the other games this season to close the ball, stop the ball at source, make it difficult for your opponents. These are all things that Sean Dyche would be saying, but it's a different time. And as I said before, the timing was bad for Arsenal. So at but some the stage, the players stop listening? They're just not as committed to the old manager? No, when, you start, when you're losing game after game and then particularly losing at home, your, your mind starts asking, you start asking questions about yourself right. as much as anything. Am I good enough? I was terrible last week. Am I going to be picked? I'm going to have to do this. I mean, you're thinking about all these other things. When a new manager comes in, gets the brush out, all of a sudden the cobwebs are all, they're all thrown away and the only thing he's asked you to do is run. Right. I bet you there was no... So it just keep it just simple, bare simple. bones. Simple. And that's how... They only had 30% of the ball. And so that tells you that when they didn't have it, they got the basics right. They closed the ball quickly, regardless. They stopped the crosses. You know, they, they made, if, if they were going to let Arsenal play, they took them to an area where they wanted to go. Martinelli never, never got a sniff out of Coleman. Same on the other side. Michalenko came sacking nothing. That's probably the worst game we've ever seen from yep. Saka this season. And Odegaard couldn't get involved in the game because they couldn't really get him the ball because of those three... three Rattles in the middle of the park. They just ran all day and closed the ball down. So listen, it 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 shows everybody else that if you close the ball quickly against Arsenal, you can knock them off the stride. 
problem is, it's not easy to do that from the first minute to the right. last minute the way that Everton did. And the reason they did it is because psychologically they've got a new manager, they're fighting for their life, and it was really basic. I don't think Everton will see that. I don't think we'll see this Everton to the end of the season. I, I don't. But we'll see enough of it. I think we'll see enough of it, but... Uh, at home. I, yeah, particularly at, yeah. at Goodison. I, I, I don't think players were not trying for Lampard. I mean, Don will know better than, than us, but the, the, the word coming out of uh, Everton, well, the fans were actually, even at the end when he was sacked, were saying, listen, you, we, we, we respect you. Right. You tried to embrace the club uh, and what it was about and the supporters, and you give it your best shot, but for whatever reason, and, you know, players, tactics, formations, but even silly little things like during the game when... Uh, Everton had a throw in down the left hand side by the technical area, and Awobi wanted to go wide right in case that ball got out there. And Dykes was like, Get in here, because if this breaks down, right. I need you a little bit tighter. It, I mean, it's just silly little things that Everton were too open, they were too easy to beat, they were too easy to play against. Uh, in the end, under Frank Lampard, that's why they picked up so few points. And I think the first thing Dykes will try and do, obviously, is make them really difficult to play against and then go from there. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.